Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Helen Marley. Today, I'm going to continue our discussion on how to teach students to play with a flexible wrist. It was Frederick Chopin in his master classes who was the first pedagogue to talk to his students about playing with a singing flexible wrist. So in prior videos, and if you've seen me live, of course, I talk about dropping to the bottom of the keys, feeling like at the bottom of the keys are beautiful pillows or uh, marshmallows, and have the students feel this sense of arm weight and then roll forward and out of the keys wrist first. So that is the perfect drip drop roll motion. And then in another prior video, I talked to you about what a tissue box touch releases. And this is for a much more pianissimo, delicate sound, which is created by a very light touch. And it's very similar to the drop and the roll, except for the tissue box actually has a slower descent as well as a slower release. And the weight that is created can be controlled by the student's mind as well as by their wrist and their forearm. I'm going to start playing this marvelous piece ah, by Poulenc. This particular clarinet and piano sonata was the last piece that he wrote before he passed away. You'll notice when I play the middle of the second movement that I'm going to use many uh, uh, drops and rolls. And there are two places in the left hand, and I'll tell you where they are, where I'm going to use a tissue box touch release. So hopefully you'll hear a different sound when I use that particular physical gesture. And a little bit later on. Oops, that should be an A, not an F. Oh my gosh, and that needs to be an E natural. <gasps> oh, that sounds better. And here's another tissue box coming up here. It sounds so impressionistic, right? The colors are all washing together. It's like uh, an apparition has just passed by, right? Oh. And at the very end of this movement, there are a lot of beautiful little tissue box touch releases in the right hand. A drop and another drop. sound is so gentle. In the next piece I'd like to play for you is called Evening Mist by Timothy Brown. So what happens when we see some of our students, <sighs> some of them play with locked wrists? Oh dear. So this is called bracing, gripping, or squeezing. Students have their, not only their wrists locked, but their fingers locked. They play on the fingertips, and then the fingers go down like little sledgehammers because they're using this knuckle instead of this knuckle to play from. And what does this sound like? I don't want to play it again because it just doesn't sound very good, does it? Ah! All right, so instead, let's have our students drop and then roll so that there is phrase shaping. And then you'll notice at the end, the student has a perfect opportunity to use a tissue box. So let them watch their wrist and their forearm as they move upwards. So now I'm gonna play it for you as a complete duet with a teacher and student part. And you'll notice that the teacher part at the end will have a tissue box touch release as well. So let's listen to the sound that I create as well as the physical gesture.
and gracefully they move their hands to their thighs. You know, the most effective way to teach good, strong technical habits is to start them from the beginning, right? To develop these good habits from the beginning. But if we have transfer students that don't understand how to use their playing apparatus in a healthy and natural way, the first lesson is, the, is a great one to start this with. Of course, students don't have to be perfect at the beginning. It takes months, years to cultivate these physical techniques. Uh, but when the students really know them, then they're comfortable and they play beautifully. And what I call with artistic personality. Homework Blues by Kevin Olson. If the student plays locked and tight, Bracing and gripping, they will never have variation in sound, nuance in a musical phrase shape. So we must teach them to play with a flexible wrist. I would sing this for you if I was a better singer. But I sing it by students' lessons. Because why? Because it teaches them the phrase shape, right? And that forward direction of the line. And I bet you're asking me, Dr. Marley, where are you going to put a tissue box touch release? And you know what? I'm going to put it at the end. Won't have those homework blues. Whoa. So our students need to know what kind of sound they want to create before they create the sound. So when they're here, what kind of sound do you want? Oh, I want it to be really quiet and gentle. Maybe with the top of the third being brought out. Oh, that's beautiful, right? So again, it all depends on the particular weight that they put into the key as well as the tempo or the speed as to how they play the notes and how they release the notes. The last piece, oh, it's second to the last piece I'd like to play for you is called All Through the Night. And this one is a wonderful Welsh folk song. This is arranged by Nancy Law. You all know this piece. All right, so here I am, the locked wrist syndrome. Not a good sound at all. What about the noodly fingers? Right? Their wrists are locked in another way, right? And they don't get any sound from the keys because they're always playing on the surface of the keys. They're like ice skaters going on the ice all the time. So instead we want to say, can you go ahead and feel like you are dropping to the bottom of the keys to those beautiful giant pillows that are below? So then we could say, well, why don't we experiment with those drops and rolls? Would it be roll, drop, roll, drop? That's hilarious, right? It doesn't work and it's uncomfortable. But what happens if we thought drop, drop, and then we're gonna roll, and we're gonna roll as far as the student can stand on their fourth and fifth fingers. And then drop again, drop, and then roll again. And you notice I even have my students shift their weight so that uh, the weight is balanced between their third finger, their wrist, and their whole forearm to their elbow. And I'll talk about weight transfer and shifting weight later on. So the tissue box touch release is actually at the climax of the entire piece, and it's at a fermata. So again, we're gonna have our students prepare the sound as well as the retardando so that they can think about their physical motion. So you noticed I exaggerated my breathing, but it's a good way to have students inhale when they do a tissue box, especially in the middle of a piece, and then breathe out on the next downbeat, because that way it makes it seem natural. Da, da, da. All right.
Right, and what's a wonderful way to have our students understand the connection between the physical gesture and the sound is use imagery. Right? What is it like when you are going into bed and you feel that nice pillow that you have? You're gonna rest your gentle, you're gonna rest your head gently on the pillow. How does that feel, right? And that will help them to get the feeling of a flexible wrist, right? And also the idea of preparing themselves for sleep, and in this case, a beautiful sound. And then the last piece I'd like to play for you is Dewdrops. This is from a series called Be a Star by Kevin Costley. I asked Kevin Costley to write a whole bunch of pieces at different levels to help our students learn how to read better. If you have students that have trouble reading, especially those who have trouble going from one part of the keyboard to another, another, you know, another register to another, uh, these are great pieces for uh, those kinds of students. So let's talk about our locked wrist students. They, their fingers start to look like little claws, oh, and their wrists are either locked here, here, or up here. Right? So then we might say, well, why don't you go ahead and try to roll off of one of these keys? And your students might want to roll off the left hand. So why is that so funny? <laughs> because the left hand hits the key instead, right? And it adds another accent that we don't need. Right? And it has nothing to do with this phrase shaping. But why don't we go ahead and ask the student to drop into the first key and then start to roll forward and off the keys, wrist first. And by the time they get to their thumb, they're playing on the outside tip, corner tip of their thumb. And this is where they could actually feel a tissue box at the end, depending on how they move out of the key. like the beginning. Love those echoes as the student moves up the octave. And then a big forte. And I improvised the end of that piece because I was thinking about what kind of physical motions the students would play. Dropping, rolling, dropping, rolling, and then this could be a drop, this could be a roll, and this could be a drop and a roll. But if we wanted the ending to be even more delicate and more gentle, more pianissimo, students could drop and they could use a tissue box on this left hand D when they play the last third in the right hand and then both hands come off and quietly drop to their thighs. So I hope that this helped you in the idea of thinking about sound so that students play with artistic personality, so they always are musicians first. And we always want to make sure that our students are playing with a flexible wrist and they're thinking about the connection between their physical gestures and their sound. And again, if you teach students that you think, oh my gosh, they're never gonna be able to do this movement, just have patience with them. Some of them might really have issues with it, but you know, our patience is key, right? And our positive demeanor with our students are, are really the keys for success with our students. So keep at it. Always re reinforce these physical gestures, this wonderful technique, so that our students uh, really learn terrific technical habits. See you next time.